The 12th Level Intellects podcast is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Visit WatchtowerDatabase.com for more podcast episodes, videos, comics, artwork, and pretty much anything DC Animated Universe you can think of. Only a 12th level intellect has the slightest hope of surviving what you are about to experience. Two, one, lap. Thank you. Okay, so this podcast is starting now. I got I got stuff to do. Uh, so we gotta <laughs> you gotta do it fast. What's the opening topic? Who cares? What's the news? Go. <laughs> so this is a speed podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> speed, okay. yeah. Speed run. All right. I'm just gonna sing while you do this, the news. This podcast is called the 12th level intellect. We have things to say first. We have things to say. I'm James. That's Ted. Go. What's the news? <laughs> this is a bi-weekly geekly podcast yeah, called the 12th I don't level care. intellect. Shut up. I, uh, they care. Fans <laughs> care. <laughs> if, if, if we rush this podcast, you're going to listen to this at twice the speed, and it's going to go down from an hour and a half to 45 minutes to 15 minutes. Yeah, put the playback speed on 2x like you always do, and it'll be even more of a brain explosion than usual. So okay. what the hell is the news, Ted? I don't have news. What They're is it? They're <laughs> doing an Aquaman spinoff called The Trench. Wow. Yes, they are. Why? Why? <laughs> that's why I asked. Why? <laughs> yeah, that sounds really <laughs> stupid. Uh, I, I mean, the trench are cool in the movie. Next. Do you think they, Aquaman's going to be in the movie? I, I don't know. They look cool. That's really the Okay, only all thing. right, all right, fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are not invested in the news this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I don't know. The... Okay, the, the what it's like making a I don't know a Batmobile movie. It's like making a, a, a <laughs> I'd watch a Batmobile movie. Yeah, actually, that sounds way better. Yeah, that actually Let's sounds really that. good. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's pitch WB. It's the creation of the Batmobile from. from no, no, my, I want to see. I want to see it from the Batmobile's point perspective. perspective. Yeah, point yeah, of yeah, point yeah. of perspective. Yeah. So we're with the Batmobile the whole movie, so we could drive an <laughs> autopilot. Um, every now and then we see people riding inside it, but you know, yeah, half the movie is sexual. just when Batman gets out of the Batmobile and goes and does stuff, and it's, and it's just half an hour mm-hmm. of it sitting there and doing nothing. But it's just parked. Mm-hmm. That, but that'd maybe be people like mess with it. That'd be kind yeah. of funny. Like maybe people like Jason Todd are like, "Oh, I'm gonna take the wheel. <laughs> get the we're gonna take the wheel." Yeah, but yeah. then the the Batmobile's like, "Nope, I'm gonna shank Pen- you." Penguin comes <laughs> up and puts a little thing to control it on it or something. Yeah. <laughs> This is a good movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck Trench. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a Batmobile movie, which would be not Arnie Hammer nope, as Batman. That's the other it wouldn't news be him. You had. He was. Yep, yep that's the other yeah, news. He, he was he rumored was gonna, to be yeah, Batman. Mm-hmm. But he's now not. he's not. That was a very <laughs> quick turnaround in the news there. So the other rumor Batman news, and you just mentioned the Penguin. Jack Black is really yeah. trying to be mm-hmm. the Penguin. He's been tweeting about it. Uh, because that's what penguins do. They're birds. They tweet. They sure do. I think mm-hmm. they're more squawk. I think if we're gonna be in technical, I think that well, uh, squawker isn't a thing. Yeah. The um, <laughs> there's no penguins in Gotham City because it's in New York and they all live there. Um, New York's near the North North Pole. It's about near, as near as closer than well. <laughs> yeah, maybe so anyway i would i would know i think jack black being the penguin would be the official end of snyderiness to any of this because th- he's so out of left he's so like not a snyder ish aspect to like i don't know are there any snyder ish aspects i don't know maybe i anymore? mean just the casting i mean the the fact that gal gadot and jason momoa still are producing. still in it is a thing well yeah i meant like uh zach and deborah snyder like I guess no. they're still producing. These I just movies. mean like aesthetically. I don't think. I think that Jack Black Penguin would be like the the end of an era for sure. Officially, it's over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no Snyder cut of Jack Black as the Penguin. <laughs> no, I think I think Jack Black could do like a pretty serious creepy Penguin. But like the Penguin's not like a serious character. I guess. Most, yeah. I mean, I mean he could. Like, yeah, if if they wanted to do, he could be dark. The Snyder but version. He's still yeah. like a monstrous looking like mutated yeah. <laughs> billionaire just get danny devito again yeah honestly right? he, he, did just, a great job. <laughs> he can come back they can Be link okay it to that. the 80s batman movies those are just uh or i guess there's only one 80s batman movie okay calm down uh what's <laughs> uh, what are other things i got a hat on my desk um 
what else why? is happening in the world. I don't know why. Actually, technically, it's on my printer, but um, I got something you asked me to bring up on the podcast. Did I? Do um, I? Do you? <laughs> Batman: Last Night on Earth is the new book by yeah, Snyder it is. Capullo, the comic book that is going to be part of the Black Label. It's a, it's basically um, Scott Snyder, not Zack Snyder. Mm-hmm. Zack Snyder's the director. <laughs> Scott yeah. Snyder. They're I don't think they're related. I don't think so either. Except by last name. Release the Snyder comic. Yeah, please. Oh, they will. They and they they're going to in May. So this is this book oh, is okay, called good. Last, <laughs> last Night on Earth, but it's night with a K, like the Dark Knight. I mean, they also the currently night. release Justice League issues, so those are also Snyder comics. That's true. Those are Snyder anyway. comics. Mm-hmm. He's what got a, a lantern. Mark James. He did the lantern. The lantern has a Joker face on it. We he noticed that. as we zoomed in yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> we zoomed in on it. I didn't notice it the first yeah, time. The first time like... I was making all these other connections because I yeah. was flipping through the. Well, so so first of all, like what we know about this book is, um, it's, it's an Elseworlds. Uh, Snyder and Capullo. It's not Elseworlds. Well, that's, not exactly. That's what throughout I heard. their throughout their Batman <laughs> run, they've been like teasing these potential futures of Batman, especially at the end of Endgame. I think it was issue forty nine. Yeah. Um, particularly delve into Avengers this a Endgame. Lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, Batman Endgame. The final Young anyway. Justice season two episode Endgame. All right, sorry, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm. This I is my have... fault. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you are, you are rushing me. You are, you are rushing this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um it's like you have places to be i do, to do. <laughs> i got more important things than this stupid I'm that's not kidding. true i listeners. love this this is great i love the you all that are hearing my voice continue okay, on well, this what i was gonna say about uh, so the cover that we saw for batman last night on earth has batman drawn by greg capullo and he's uh-huh. holding that green lantern with the joker's face on it yep. but at first i didn't see the joker's face on it i just yep. saw the lantern i was like that's interesting because i was just flipping through the multiversity guidebook which oh, is yeah. like a that thing that flips the, it shows every single one of the 52 universes there's like maybe seven or eight that are unknown for now but and one of one them, of them it's lantern. not unknown yeah. but it's earth 15 that's in that guidebook yeah. has like a, a lantern there and it's just a lantern on the page and it says it's like the cosmic grail of the multiverse mm-hmm. and it's hidden through time or something and like maybe it'll be discovered one day so that got me thinking the first time when i flipped through it before i saw the cover i was like oh maybe that's tying into doomsday clock with yeah. alan scott's green lantern and how we saw in doomsday clock dr manhattan <coughs> which is still might that be. whole thing yeah, it still might be. It probably is more likely to be that, especially now that we've seen that the Joker's face is yeah. on this one for the last night on Earth. And and like Scott Snyder hasn't had a whole lot to do with multiversity, whereas Jeff Johns hasn't either. It's definitely yeah. a Grant Morrison thing, but like that sort of guidebook is the type of thing I think that like Scott Snyder even has potential, but like Snyder, Johns, like all of DC's kind of like guard it, guiding storytelling architects. It's Did the type of thing I would imagine. Checks? Were you trying to say I meant to say checks? I meant to say they're <laughs> DC's like creative guiding architects for their stories. Okay. It's We're gonna call them Graham gar- Morrison, gar- Jeff Johns. I'm calling them whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is they probably had some input in that book, uh-huh. and it probably teased some future stories. Well, if the if the lantern does have to do with Doomsday Clock, then it sort of. Uh... Uh, not confirms, but goes along with my suspicions that Doomsday Clock is set in another Earth that's not actually the one that we're accustomed to DC-wise. Uh, I know you I don't, don't think know. that, but I think it is. Yeah. So, And I'm usually right. So, you well, know. the reason why I don't is because of DC Rebirth, um, the special where Wally West yeah. returns, you know, yeah. came out like two and a half years ago. That is firmly the, the DC universe, and we see Dr. Manhattan meddling and stuff well, like that. Well, when the so. comic finish is coming out in 12 years, then we'll know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see I think thing. number nine comes out. Um, the yeah, we've seen that the cover our episode now. airs. Yeah. So this episode's gonna come out two days before issue nine. Great. Probably. That means so I we can talk about it next time already. Yeah, order it. Uh, order it now. I won't, but I will after this weekend. <laughs> Good. There For anyone go. that's interested, the reason I'm rushing the podcast is because I have to go film my movie, and it's called Virality, and it's about me being brought to YouTube to fight Google and to learn all about it at. A website that no longer exists because I stopped paying for it because no one visited it. <laughs> Vi Reality is a pretty good name for a movie. I wonder who came up with that. It's you. Yeah. That's the answer. Thank Yay. you for the credit. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for the credit Yay, there. Ted did everything. I came up with the, the name. I, I'm not good at coming up with movie names. 
You have a screen. You know, you know what credit. I would call our, our Batmobile? Movie? Yeah, that's true. We're doing that next. You need to know what they call it? <laughs> I already have a name for it. What? The Batmobile. Whoa. Isn't that a great movie title? For... <laughs> it's like a metaphor because you're not. I'd actually call mo- it DC's The Batmobile. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. That stands for the continue Det- to the next section. Detective <laughs> Comics. Podcast. The Batmobile. It's a metaphor because mo- you're not mobile the whole time. You're only in the mobile. You're in it. I'm more of a Lego guy. So today's podcast is about the reign of the Superman. <laughs> Hooray! Did you there watch it a, lot a while of rain. ago? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I watched it five minutes ago. So <laughs> we're both. So how's, on the, how's same the weather page. over there, James? Is it rainy? Yeah, shut up. It's it's <laughs> it's been it's it snowed. It stopped. Yeah, you're not. You don't even want. You don't want to know the actual weather. Um, I wrote down a few things <laughs> while watching it. So let me get to those. Um, I have a few things in my memory that I could probably pull from. Okay, so it's about, uh, you know, Superman, death of Superman, he died. Spoilers for death of Superman. Superman dies in death of Superman. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. Um, so I think I did. Then, uh, this one's about, like, oh, Superman's dead. So what do we do? And there's a bunch of clones. Su- there's a bunch of different Supermen that are here to fill the gap. And one of them's mm-hmm. a clone, and one of them's a John Henry Irons, and one of them's a, tr- a, t- a, t- a hologram, and one of them's a, a cyborg. Cyborg. There we go. I was trying but to not... remember who the hell the last one was, even though he's the cyborg's most cyborg's in the one. movie too. <laughs> like Vic Stone's in the movie, but this is a different cyborg. This is that's cyborg true. Story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which <you>. they they <laughs> so yeah direct sequel to Death of Superman. They did a lot of like uh, setting up for these characters in that first yeah. movie. Where we saw John Henry Irons, we saw Hank Henshaw, we saw mm-hmm. um, the Cadmus cloning facility and all this <coughs> stuff. So it's um, now it's very um, obviously an, an adaptation from the 90s story arc um, of the same name, Reign of yes. Superman. And it's for the most part stayed, if not like exactly to the storytelling beats, there were like some other stuff that they had to cut just because it made sense to cut it's a, it's a lot like how when they adapted under the red hood for a dvd yeah. it was like well they can't include superboy prime's universe right. punching yeah they're that they're doesn't make sense. <laughs> they're using the name and the important bits or whatever yeah kind of just but, doing what they want yeah in the comics like this story arc actually ends up being the catalyst for like coast city's destruction right. which drives how jordan insane to be yeah. parallax and yeah. that has like no room for no. this movie. Even <laughs> they though com- they just got him out well, of the way and along with all the other other Justice it's League. It's Phil Phil Barusa does the um the character yeah. designs for this movie and Young Justice and I was just thinking I was like, "Oh yeah, Hal Jordan has gray hair, but nope. Nope, that's Young Justice. <laughs> yeah. Young Justice he has the gray hair." So I've been anyway. seeing a lot more Phil Barusa lately than I expected to because of all these movies and the new Young Justice season and all that he's stuff. He's a busy Yeah, busy man. Uh, he's he's good. He's like uh he he's got a more anime kind of uh rigid not rigid what's the word like a, i don't know more detailed style than say uh a batman animated series or a a crypto the super dog you know mm-hmm. <laughs> he, his lex luthor is a bit more detailed than the crypto the super dog lex luthor it's, speaking of lex he's voiced by dwight from uh-huh. the office yes once again as he wasn't at the superman which i like that. yeah i think I it think was a lot a better job. this time than the first time the first time i was like in deaths of superman it felt weird mm-hmm. like it didn't seem like he matched the character like he was too sure. high pitched and weird and stuff but then i think in this one it fit a lot more with his like zany scientist mm-hmm. stuff he was doing and he's being a little more kooky and whatever yeah you know well i've always Jim put enjoyed... his stapler in jello <laughs> yeah <laughs> good that... one jim mm. so <laughs> episode one <laughs> That makes me think that you've only seen the first episode of The Office. I've seen <laughs> all of The Office several times. All right, prove it. that Okay, well, in the last episode of The Office... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I won't do that. You don't know. You don't know what happens in the last episode of The Office. Keep, keep uh, whatever keep the, the last office. episode of The Office is called a secret. Who's the boss at the last episode? It doesn't even matter. All right, moving on. So, <laughs> Superboy. I want to talk about Superboy because okay. this is my favorite version of Superboy. It's a '90s yeah. jacket yep. style Superboy. He's really funny. Um, he's a bit of an asshole. Yep. But like, uh, he's just like teenage the uh, Superboy who like didn't have the um the kints there to like guide him. It was just yeah. like 
if Superboy now this just is, is like celebrity culture. This is technically the same Superboy that the Young Justice Superboy is based on, right? Like the character. Technically, yeah. Technically, because Con- like yeah, Connor that Kent, one became yeah. a very different character than this nineties. Yeah. It's, they all kind of skip the '90s like aspect yeah. of them for Young Justice. They basically like, yeah, they they made him very stoic and serious yeah. in Young Justice, and angry. which <laughs> in the comics he became that way. But it took a lot of character growth for him to get there, you know. Mm-hmm. But it first he had to be a sunglasses little bitch, and then he was fine. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no matter what, he's he like has never had like a real uniform. He's like leather jacket, sunglasses, yeah, which they and then kept he goes almost to black shirt and blue jeans. Exactly what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Eradicator had some design uh, liberties taken with him a little bit. Okay. Like he, for mm-hmm. the most part, looked what I thought he, you know, would, the goggles. A lot of this, the 90s aspects of this, like the goggles and, and They're the, intact. The Even the Cyborg jacket, Superman yeah. is like straight out of like Terminator. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that's 80s. But yeah, he was but yeah. He, he, the design aspects were like modified just slightly enough to fit with everything, but still were, mm-hmm. which I, is good because if they're doing this, you know, Superman Doomsday was the, the most condensed possible version of this, and they didn't even include most of these guys or any of these guys, uh, you know, the, the, if they're going to do it again, they might as well do it, quote unquote, right or whatever. So Right, um, right. Yeah, I, I'm glad they took another stab at it, like bringing in all these other characters because Superman Doomsday definitely condensed yeah. the story so much more. Speaking of the Superboy kind of... clone, though, that's the scene where all the other like alien resurrection misfire clones just kill. The D, the, the they guy. are the DN aliens. Okay, is that an that's actual? Jack, those are actual characters. That's a Jack, oh, okay. Jack Kirby thing. Yeah, <laughs> the D, DN aliens. Okay, well they were creepy as <laughs> they're <fuck>. great. <laughs> yeah. It was that scene was horrifying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to talk about voices. We talked about Lex's voice a little bit, but I also want to talk about. I don't like that they've made. Well, okay. I enjoy Hal Jordan being. I think it's Nathan. Nathan Fillion. Fillion. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, it is, for but sure. it's annoying that he was a different guy in Justice League War, and you know, there's like a. No, it's pretty... Nathan Fillion. Wasn't no, it? it wasn't for that one. I don't know How who much it you is. Bet. But the. Because he got that Unless scene in bed. Justice League War where he's like, you're not just a guy dressed as a bat, are you? And Batman looks at him and smiles. He's like, are you freaking kidding me? Or whatever. Like, I really like that scene. It's not Nathan Philly, and I wish that it was still that guy. That's my thoughts on that. Uh, but, like, how much you want to bet, though? What? <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> looking it up. You're right. <clears throat> Damn it. All right. We should have. You should have bet. You should have bet against me. You could have won some money. All right. Well, you're right. It was not Nathan Philly in, in Justice League War. Who is it? Yeah. Uh, Justin Kirk. Yeah, that's that nobody. <laughs> yeah, that's why they didn't bring him back. But it, it just bothers Alan, me. I guess. Alan <laughs> Tudyk was Superman in Justice League War. Oh. Speaking of <laughs> Firefly people, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they could have kept him. Oh well. Um, well, George Newbern was Steve Trevor. Wow. Speaking of Superman, everything is just backwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Susan Eisenberg was Lois Lane. Um, Dark but Side's did ha- voice was also yes. really stupid in this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you agree yeah. with that. Because um, I, I made a comment on our Batman and Harley Quinn like prediction video a couple of years ago about uh, the Floronic Man's voice was just Kevin. It's just Kevin Michael Richardson. He's just talking. And I had made a mm-hmm. prediction that it would be like how in Justice League War, the trailer just had um what's his face spike spiegel tsunami tom guy i can't uh the blah you know i mean anyway he was yeah. like uh let the invasion begin i'm just a guy talking and then in the a actual- world yeah where the the, <laughs> the world is at war yeah it's thank a you. world war this is apocalypse big old lips on dark side but he's got then in the movie he's got like a you know garbled like Oh, I can't impersonate it, but it's big, blah, and weird, and just, and it's so, so, but then in this, he's just a guy again, and it's not the same guy, even. It's just, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you just a guy? Like, I don't know. Dark, a guy. If Dark Side it can't, Kev- Dark Side can't be it's just a Kevin guy. It's not Kevin Michael Richardson as Dark Side, is it? What? No. It, so it, Dark Side can't just be a guy unless it's. Uh, Michael Ironside. Then he can just be a guy, but every other voice is just a guy. It just sounds 
stupid, okay? I like the one in Young Justice, how it's kind of a dark. Yeah, okay. But he he has barely said anything. I haven't really had time to absorb it yet, I guess. He'll say more. Um, um, the next half of the season. Yeah. So is, uh, Tony Todd is the guy, the voice actor. I don't know what Tony sure. Todd's done. Okay. Yeah, he's a guy. He was Kern in Star Trek The Next Generation. Do you know, remember Kern? I don't, but Adam does if he's listening to this. <laughs> and Mark Adam, does. that's for you. <laughs> Kern is dark side. Is in that this like movie. that's the that's that band that does the uh, uh, I'm trying to make a corn joke, but I can't this think guy, of any corn songs. <laughs> he was also the candy man in that horror trilogy, so that's nice. That's fun. Um, what Dark else? Sides the candy man. Come, Did you notice come how the watchtower the watchtower was candy. stop all the, the candies shut in the up. X pit. <laughs> the watchtower is the Justice League watchtower. Did you notice that? Yeah, dude, this is a it's the Justice League. No, it's from the cartoon Justice League. Did that's you cool. notice this? At yeah. all? Well, it's been a month since I watched oh, it. Oh my god! So <laughs> it's the big like castle-y first just first Watchtower. It's the same design. So so you're telling me that the Watchtower from the Justice League cartoon uh-huh. is the Watchtower in this movie, uh-huh. but the Watchtower from the Crime Syndicate, <laughs> yeah, of Crisis I see where you're is going the Watchtower in the <laughs> Fatal Five movie. That which is, is exactly supposed to be the what DCAU. I'm telling you. Yeah. That so they so basically what you're saying is there was some sort of Thing that made them trade watchtowers. There's some sort of watchtower conundrum that I'm gonna have to investigate. Maybe it's like a, a watchtower exchange program <laughs> <laughs> between the between the I get, I get your watchtower for three months, and you can take our it, watchtower. It's like for... a it's a it's like a babysitting thing. I'm gonna watch your tower. You watch my tower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> It's another, uh, good, it's another movie to pitch to DC. Yeah, well, the Watchtower Exchange Program coming soon to theater. Web, no for short. Uh, the I thought about, when we were talking about how Phil Barasa draws all the stuff, I was thinking, I wonder if they, they reuse any background characters from other Phil Barasa stuff so that he doesn't have to literally redraw everybody. And they totally did because the Hello Megan Megan was hugging Superboy when he's taking selfies during that one scene. Ooh. And I was like, whoa. That's a crossover. <laughs> yeah. Is this a crossover episode? So this takes place uh, on the Young Justice timeline uh, during the formative, during the whatever years Hello Megan is actually on TV. Like 20 years before Young Justice. So there's two but, different Superboy clones, like Luthor's Immortal. Well, maybe. <laughs> the Justice maybe. League has already formed by the start of Young Justice, so it's not impossible. So Cyborg is both a founding member of the Justice League <laughs> uh-huh. and a new member of the Outsiders. Yeah, and Cyborg time. has been Cyborg, but then he becomes Cyborg as a younger man in Young Justice later on. Okay, all right. Thank you for And there's three that. Jokers, and where is Nightwing? Uh, so um, <laughs> there's... Uh, what else? There, <laughs> um, I wrote not usually into cartoon characters, but party Lois was hot. The <laughs> <laughs> when she attends Lex Luthor's party, I was like, "Oh my!" That's all I had. Everyone's say about that. got a soft spot for Jessica Rabbit, don't you lie? Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> that's why they you married they your invented wife. a new boom tube so that the plot could work. Is another thing that I wrote down <laughs> because. <laughs> There's just, in Justice League War, there's just normal boom tubes like you'd expect and mother boxes and all that. But in this mm-hmm. one, they got to f- make a ring of people to make a boom tube kind of Avengers portal in the sky for no reason. <laughs> it's it's just like the end of the Dr. Seuss is the Grinch, where all the Who's down in Whoville all, <laughs> yeah, all join hands and make a ring. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they turn in, they, their arms turn into squids and they <laughs> link up. And, Chris, <laughs> and Christmas that's what the Grinch presents. was trying to prevent, was a pop- Apocalypse going through. <laughs> we thought he was just being an asshole about Christmas. <laughs> my, my mom, my mom is a uh, cardiovascular like nurse. She works in heart uh-huh. heart surgery stuff, and she was all, every every time Christmas rolls around with the Grinch, she's like, the Grinch started having his heart three th- sizes too small, but by the end of it, it grows twice as large as it was, which means it's still one size too yeah. small. <laughs> I think by the by the end of it, <laughs> either way you look at it, it's a problem. I thought it was three grew three sizes. I don't. So maybe it started two sizes too small, grew three, so now yeah, it's one size too big. I don't know. Yeah, there's it's, something It's off. weird math. Yeah. It's a weird math. Also, it's still you should probably wrong, just die but it, if it's still wrong. Happen, yeah. yeah, it'll still kill him. 
But so there's a uh, anyway, there's a there's a weird different boom tube and it just falls on the Justice League and everyone's like the Justice League is dead. And I was like, no, they're just in a boom tube. Like I know this. It's not called Death of Justice League. <laughs> yeah. There's like Superman. they wouldn't yeah, the, and like the world is still reeling from the death of the Justice League. And it's like no, it's it's not because Superman mm-hmm. just died. Why would it, why uh no one cares anymore. It's just like the end of uh, Avengers Infinity War. It's like everyone disappearing in the smoke. Yeah. There's yeah. not a body. Right. They You're not dead unless yeah, they there's a body. They should have just uh, had everyone. Yeah, they should have had him just kind of sizzle away, you know. Please, Mr. Stark. Steel's Iron Man suit removal was cool. Uh, yeah. When his suit pieces all float off, it's like Iron Man. That's that. Uh, time while Superman is arriving in Rocket, a little clunky. Uh, <laughs> this is when so Superman's alive, which by the way I yep. thought was really anticlimactic. He's just alive. Yeah, he they just kind of and he, but he was in the black suit. Black suit. Yeah, Superman's I always mean, a big yeah, deal. it was cool for some reason. For some reason, it's always a big deal. But that wasn't too far off from his Superman Doomsday look. Like he still he had mm-hmm. the long locks and well, everything. Yeah, because that's why he looked like. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Pretend you're a child watching this, and you're like, "Superman's dead!" I was dead. a child oh who had this action figure. Yeah, there's a there's a line of action figures called Superman Man of Steel, and they made the black suit Superman too. Actually, he had the same gun, that same giant Ooh. gun that he mm-hmm. used. I had that. I had that toy. <laughs> I had a, um, I had a Doomsday toy. It was like Doomsday and Hunter Prey Superman came in oh, a two pack. Mm-hmm. Hunter Prey Superman was like the special armor that he got that made him kind That's of the look most like 90s Superman. <laughs> super 90s Superman. That's a cool look. Look it up. Google 6,000 pouches. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you ever see the Rob Layfield thing, Pouch Man? Yeah. You sh- yeah, you got to look that up. It's hilarious. <laughs> pouch Man. All right. Anyway, that's Pouch Man saved the day that he saved Superman. Not really. But anyway, so Superman comes back to life, and it's anticlimactic, and then he's in his rocket, and he's flying toward the thing, and then there's, like, five whole minutes where we don't see him, and all this, like, the apocalypse, people are going to come through, and then they don't, they get shut off, like, that whole sequence happens, and then Superman bursts through the wall to fight uh, Cyborg Superman, so there's just a Mm -hmm. whole bunch of time where he's been, like, rocketing toward the watchtower, and he just hasn't gotten there yet i guess like that felt a little like forced in there like well we can't have him open the apocalypse breach while superman's in the room so we but we for some reason still have to show superman arriving first i don't know it made me angry okay um what else uh I someone say, will... i i might have mentioned some deaths of superman when we talked about that but i love uh john jones's uh appearance yeah in these movies he just looks really cool there's yeah, like, that scene in Death of Superman where he like shrieks <coughs> through the fire, and mm-hmm. it's like a really cool moment. Yeah. I mean, it sucks he's got like a like, long oh, no, face. Trying... His face is very got... long. Why the long face? Is long. <laughs> yeah. It's probably shape changing. That's how. Yeah, and it's not shape shifting, man. But that's a spoiler for a future video that we're doing. <laughs> Hashtag keep a jurist five a secret. Sorry. All right. Too many spoilers. <laughs> Too many spoilers. Yeah, man. Um, Someone sent me a video recently that was a, it was or it was like a young someone. It's it was it was a video of peop, someone watching Young Justice and pointing out how there's a lot of shots where people, the animation is so like cheap or whatever that like people aren't even blinking. They're not doing anything while they're talking. There has like a whole conversation. Cartoons. Do cartoons where, have to blink? Yeah, I don't know. But they're, they're just complaining that, like, I, I don't necessarily agree, but they're complaining that, like, oh, that they, they had this whole conversation, and it's just like a Family Guy episode where only their mouths are moving, and occasionally, like, they're parts of their yeah. hands or something. I mean, that and happens. So, yeah, and so I was thinking that while watching this, because it's the same art style and rem- reminiscent of that, and there's definitely, I could tell there's, like, that a higher budget me. for these movies that they don't yeah. have to spread out over a whole season or whatever, because... There are, you know, in the action scenes, it's a lot more dynamic, and there's a lot of like, even when they are just having a conversation, they're not, their eyebrows are doing stuff. They're, you know, but I think that's also just kind of an unfair uh, way to look at it because it's not like it's like a Disney movie where they're animating every single frame, you know, this very mm-hmm. fluid, like, I have a personality and stuff. It's just right. a, a thing. It's just, it's just Superman, it's an anime. <laughs> basically like it basically is yeah, yeah. Phil, Phil Burris is very much like inspired by anime and there's yeah. a lot of those techniques here um yeah I mean it's just the way it is I, I don't need him blink I'm thinking like the DCAU, <laughs> I don't blink does anyone ever blink in that yeah 
Batman blinks sometimes. I watch Fine. it. I pay attention. <laughs> uh, I um I blink, yeah. so I probably miss it. Um, I just want to say real quick, yeah. that um Rosario Dawson played Wonder Woman. Uh huh. And I like her. Yeah. I like Rosario. <laughs> she has for several uh, movies. She's awesome. I did like the little ice cream callback uh, in Lois Lane. Yeah, and from cream. Justice League War, which Rosario Dawson was not Wonder Woman for that movie. No, she was not. She became Wonder Woman in Throne of Atlantis, <laughs> which should... is kind of when they settled on most of the voice yeah. cast, I think. She should be there. Yeah. She can be the night nurse. Oh, wait. The, the thing is done. The series are all canceled. Uh, or she can be um a progressive um advocate because she was very involved in the grassroots uh -huh. bernie sanders campaign that was pretty cool. oh Good yeah for her. she did that you keep your politics out of my youtube channel ted um <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh there were some lines in the movie that felt kind of bad <laughs> uh okay. i wrote down three of them uh, one. Well, two of them are said by Superman and are bad. The other by Bibo Bobowski. No, he had, all, should, all of his should, dialogue all was of... beautiful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Superman uh, says, "Over my dead body," which was dumb. Well, yeah, because he was dead. <laughs> and he also said, "As I live and breathe," which was dumb. Mm. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like, okay, I got it. Yeah, you were dead. Ha! You were dead. Now you're alive. <laughs> he and... should say like. <laughs> Like, um, I don't know, give me some water and I'll turn it to wine. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's Jesus know. now. Um, There's some Jesus allegories here. <laughs> he is kind of Jesus. Sure. Yeah. Um, the, the, he's got the long hair. Yeah, that's the only reason. Cause and he also came back to life. Real Jesus he... had long hair. So, anyway, uh, <clears throat> the, di the last line I had written down was uh, Lois Lane's about to shoot Cyborg Superman. She says, Get away from him, you son of a bitch. And it's stupid. <laughs> I don't know. It just came off really like, really, there's no, like, I, I wanted a pun there. They didn't say, like, oh, get off him, you, or get away from him, you metal bitch. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just do something more, a more akin cyborg to. Cyborg psychopath. Yeah, you psychopath. I don't fucking Psy know. You robot. Whoa. Buddy. I don't know. What are, uh, is the cyborg Superman controlled by Darkseid in the comic? Mm, well, or created by Darkseid or anything? No, like they <coughs> they do like ally with each other ally. at one point. Mm -hmm. They have an alliance, but it's like not not like this early. You okay, know? it's like a different story arc, but they kind of like brought that into i guess it was kind of good to tie it back to the justice league war and stuff because these movies don't mm -hmm. tend to reference themselves very often like they all take place yeah, in the same yeah. universe but you wouldn't know it if you did if you unless you followed all of them or whatever cyborg superman does go on to become like a pretty major villain though for the dcu yeah like he he's like particularly involved in the sinestro core uh which i would love to see them adapt that in in mm -hmm. this animation but like to make the sinestro core war so effective you need to kind of have have that establish the established <coughs> continuity um yeah. where sinestro you see his lieutenants and it's like it's cyborg superman it's the anti-monitor it's parallax it's like all of the dc's like yeah that bad guys all in one room i think if they yeah. did that as one of the movies they're not going to wait to do all that stuff first they're just going to shove it right. in like they did this movie so <laughs> this is going to be a, like let's do it because the, that's Having what the people want to see there would be useful but it's like <clears throat> i can't see them like phasing hal jordan out to like introduce kyle rayner and do like a 90s thing like yeah. that doesn't make sense for this sort of line no. of dvds i'd i think we'd sooner see them do simon baz and jessica cruz since they're yeah in the main like like we've seen in fatal five yeah these movies years. can't keep up with their comics that they're based on like they're no. they're already very far behind <laughs> like, yeah. but then they just do reign of superman and stuff that's not part of their lore anyway yeah. so but it didn't like have the justice league with like booster gold and blue beetle and blood right yeah. you know which was like the original team that yeah, fought yeah. against doomsday i wanted to see blood win and death of superman me too right? i wanted to see the <laughs> yellow powering guy gardener that was around at the time. <laughs> his uh wasn't he like a weird tattooed 
War not or yet. Something? He okay. wasn't. He, he that was later. What's but what's at this point, called? not War Machine. At this point, he had like a yellow power <clears> ring, <throat> but he it's he was still like a okay. I guess he. I don't know if he called himself a warrior. Yet, warrior. That's what it is. That was his name. <clears throat> um, anyway, <clears throat> do you uh, think <laughs> that? Well, I don't know. I guess the next movie in this universe is going to be Batman Hush, yeah. which we're going to see a preview of with Fatal Five. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Yeah, they're pumping these out now. Like, There's going to be like five mm-hmm. animated DC movies this year if we include that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> movie. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So Well, that's a good world that we live in. It is, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks, Bruce Tim. Um, Superman versus Clone from Doomsday is another thing. Is it... The, 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 all the Supermen were kind of just mushed into one Superman clone yeah. in Superman Doomsday. Um, exactly. And that was not nearly as effective, I don't think, because it all they also had to... They did both <laughs> stories in one mm-hmm. movie, pretty much. Um, yeah. I definitely liked Eradicator and Superboy, and Steel didn't really have much charisma. He didn't really do anything. He just kind of yeah, hit Yeah, they hit look cool. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, they look cool. <laughs> That's a good... <laughs> Wasn't that Alan Burnett's answer to why why do we think Batman is always everyone's favorite superhero? Because <laughs> he looks cool. And he had like a bunch of good answers, and he's like, also I, he looks I have, cool. <laughs> I have my own theories on why Batman's everyone's favorite. I don't know if now's the time to get into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> You're kind of short on time, yeah, and this is a it, bit man. of a uh, this is a bit of an essay that I have in my head. Okay, well, so. we'll do a whole video on it, man. You could just do that. Yeah, I you could submit a topic once in a while. Why don't you? <laughs> Why Batman is the prime example of Satanist literature. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, make it more clickbaity. Why title. Batman is Satan? Well, <clears throat> he, I'll, I'll watch is, that. But we'll get into that another day. <laughs> uh, okay, there were unexpected surprises in this movie. I thought I knew exactly what would happen, but I didn't. However, well, that's because you I, didn't read the original comic. Well, book. It's, yeah. But I kind of, I kind of got the gist of it anyway. But uh, the, 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 um, oh my goodness, what was I gonna say? Oh, Death of Superman was basically existed in order to do this movie, the Reign of Super, Reign of the Superman. Mm-hmm. But I actually liked Death of Superman more than this one, I think. Um, be- that even though was it was brutal that fight scene with yeah. Doomsday was like the whole movie which was epic like the animation was pretty yeah. amazing and everything like uh the fight with wonder woman in particular was awesome mm-hmm. so there was a lot to like in that um and yeah you're probably right it probably was stronger than yeah well it's, i, I had like an actual emotional reaction to superman's death even though i knew it would happen and i've seen mm-hmm. him die 60 times and everything else but the yeah i don't know in this one it was just like put all the stuff all the stuff that you want to see, here it is. And, like, there's no, like... Well, you know, I think it's worth mentioning, I don't think we've said this, but, like, the original Death of Superman comic book was a national event. Yeah. It was kind of like everyone all over the country, all over the world was like, how are, how dare they? Yeah. DC <laughs> killing off Superman? And yeah, because like, they were like, hey, pay attention to us. <laughs> we killed Superman. Right, yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah. But it was like everyone who reads comics knew that it wasn't going to be permanent yeah. by any means. But, like... Even then, at the time, it was like Jason Todd and uh, Barry Allen. <coughs> Those are two deaths that happened before Superman's that stayed pretty permanent for about 20 yeah. years. At the time of the story, it was probably like maybe up to a decade, probably not even a decade after their deaths. But was, but yeah, a, like, was returning, yeah. was Superman coming back a response to people being mad, or were they always planning no. to do that? Either? Always. They yeah, were always right. planning on it. It was always an extended story arc and just a, a way to, you know, change the status quo and yeah. do something new. Kind of like, which uh, they did, so. you know, when Family Guy killed Brian, and everyone's like, oh my God, petition, bring Brian back. Online petition is a right to uh, Cartoon Network, whatever, Fox, blah. And then he was back two episodes later because that was that was already part of the season because that would the, mm-hmm. well, they're not gonna do that. Um, <laughs> all the Cybermen died? Question <clears> mark. <throat> all those all those guys that return into the the Who's in Whoville to make the Who portal. They're just yeah. like they just died. I guess question so mark. I, I thought they were. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be like all the guys fall to the ground. Girlfriend goes up like. Oh, Ricky or whatever your name is. Oh my God, are you dead? And then he, they all start going like, "Oh, 
oh, and standing up and like, oh, what happened? Yeah, yeah. But then oh, they are all just lying there. They're just dead. So they're just dead. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> and then and it immediately cuts to Superman and Lois Lane having a fun little chat in the diner in there. Oh, everything's fine. <laughs> like, no, all those people are dead. What you didn't you didn't help them? You didn't <laughs> you didn't do anything? I don't know. <laughs> you just let them die. Uh, do you think so there's a post credit scene? Oh, I didn't Did see you, it. You oh. didn't catch it? No. Ooh. So I'll spoil it for you. Yeah, just tell me. So the Justice League meet up on their Justice League cartoon watchtower. Uh-huh. And they're talking to um they're talking about Dark Side. They're talking about this war with Dark Side and they want to end it. And they have invited Luthor to be a member of their team, Ooh. actually. He's the latest member. This seems a lot like Dark Side War. Oh, yeah. Like the Jeff John-style Dark Side War book that we've seen, that we've read. Because Lex is part of the team, and they so go we'll, to Apocalypse. Now we'll now get that without any new gods. <laughs> We're about to get our, our Dark Side War <laughs> we'll get that storyline coming. Without the anti-monitor setup or anything. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean... <clears throat> I mean, I, yeah, maybe, maybe, or maybe that's how they introduced the Anti Monitor. Who knows? Because it's kind of the Anti Monitor's origin story. If they did He's like a Mobius. another two parter or something, or maybe a three parter for it. He's then. Mobius of the <clears throat> Mobius chair, the Metron's Mobius yeah. chair. He mm-hmm. is the original Mobius who had the chair of the Mobius yeah. chair. He's Mobius. That's true. Of the chair. You got it. Okay. That's his chair. <laughs> yeah. It's his chair. I got Metron two, took it. I got two more Who's things. Who's Metron? Who's, who's Metron to take his chair like that? This, okay. What is this, musical chairs? Are we talking about that time that Maddie's chair went missing? And then it, it was Metron's chair all along? The You mean Mobius's chair? That's, yeah. <laughs> no, it's the Mobius <laughs> chair. I don't know. Metron the, took the chair from Mobius. The, it's I, not his chair. I feel like we're that meme with the two people being like, it's not the thing. But then you yell back, and then I yell back, and then I throw the like chair the point, at you. like the pointing Spider-Man's. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it. I thought I had two things left, but actually we already talked about one of them. So I only have one thing left about the movie, and it's probably the most important thing that I want to talk about. And okay. that is that at the end of the movie, not the post credits, but the end sure. scene where Superman and Lois Lane are in the Bibbo bar, mm-hmm. there's a mannequin in the background, and it looks mm-hmm. like Seraphin, and that's it. Seraphin. Seraphin who? You know, the forever people. It's really important. Oh, that Seraphin. The, the, <laughs> the joke is guy, that right? it's not important. It's the fact that it was silly. Which one's Seraphin? He's the little He's cowboy. He's a cowboy. Dude. Yeah. He's a little cowboy. That's what I thought. He's a little um, cowboy. Maybe it is Seraphin back there. Maybe he's just chilling on the <laughs> just standing like... there. He has the yeah, question he's... mask where he has no face. Nice. Well, that's that. I don't know okay, if you well, have anything was, else about the that movie. Was, uh, yeah, that was Reign of Superman, I guess. <laughs> oh, I, guess. Yes. I I hope our listeners want to watch it now. You can you can watch on the DC Universe app. <laughs> now that you know the whole movie, subscriber. everything that sucks about it, and everything that was no, pretty cool. We left cool. a lot out. We we didn't talk about a lot of a lot of stuff. And then you know what about. happens in the post credits. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers: well, I'm Superman just speculating. isn't dead. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I thought I thought it was fine. Like I watched them um, both back to back. That's the Superman. Then I watched uh, the Reign of Superman. Yeah, and they were nice paired together. Death was definitely the better movie, but Reign is fine. You got it's any? Fine. You got any comics you can talk about? Yeah, I was going to talk about jo- Green We're going to joke about four. how this section is. It still called comic relief now that you're not doing comic relief anymore. You're yeah, doing graphic I've content. Gotten- I've got my new show called Graphic Content, and um, warning, it's it has graphic content. It sure does. And then I, then when we were talking about it before we started recording, I made a joke about how you could do this one without me, and you could call it Comic Sans James. And then, <laughs> you remember when I said that? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, give uh, it a go. Because <laughs> I didn't it. read anything. So like Green usual. Lantern number. So I, I have to be careful about what I say in this segment now because I don't want to talk about things that I talk about my other uh-huh. show. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to talk about Green Lantern number four, which is the newest Grant oh, Morrison. Sorry, people. There's not going to be a Green Lantern number four graphic content episode, I nope. guess. There might be a Green Lantern number five or six. Whoa. <laughs> All but right. that's, uh, you know what? We'll see. 
So in number four, we see this like little cowboy dude who's talking to this woman. Um, the woman ends up being one of the dark stars who is like sort of like the Green Lantern Corps, but they answer to the controllers and not the guardians of the universe. And the controllers <laughs> were the also sort beeps. of tied into the orange lantern, like oh, okay. and yeah, all that. They kind of sort of were. But the dark stars um, are coming back to prominence. And you might know, if you know your DC stuff, Jon Stewart was a dark star. Do I know my DC stuff? Too. So was Donna Troy. They were yeah. both members of the dark stars. Two of their more interesting members. So anyway, um, in Green Lantern number four, we see this like random cowboy dude with multiple arms. And he's talking to one of the dark stars. Is it Seraphim? And he's just... <laughs> It is actually Hal Jordan. Spoilers, oh my God. Because he's talking himself up. He's like, well, let me tell you about this Green Lantern Hal Jordan guy <laughs> that I happen to see. And he goes through this whole story. By the end of it, the Dark Star's like, I know that you're Jordan. I know that you're Why you're is him. he a he's cowboy like, with multiple He's like, how arms. did you know? And he takes his cowboy hat off. It's like, of course, it's Hal Jordan. Did like, you just have, why does he have so many arms? Because his ring allows him to oh, shape change. Oh, man. Not shape shift. Change. He's a shape it changer. Real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but what was really cool about this story is so Grant Morrison is known for uh, creating this entity uh, that he's kind of reintroduced over over his DC comic stuff called the Sun Eater. You might know the Sun Eater am, from All Star Superman. Mm-hmm. Do you remember how Superman had the little baby Sun Eater and he was yes. like feeding it little baby suns and he was like, "Here you go, little baby Sun Eater." So in in Green Lantern number four, there is an actual giant Sun Eater that's coming to this alien planet, and guess what it's doing? Guess. Eating the suns. Ah, uh, it is. Oh it's man, eating their sun. <laughs> just like <laughs> you'd expect silly it guy. to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is just an out of control Sun Eater that's eating a sun. And they Damn. have to stop the Sun Eater. And it's like Green Lantern and a couple other Green Lanterns. One of them is a fucked up looking Green Lantern. He's got like these blood vessels coming out of his neck. And then like his head is like made out of like, I don't know, it looks like pie or something weird. It's just like a very strange shaped Green Lantern. Grant Morrison's okay. been having these really weird looking Green Lanterns in this book. Which shaped is shaped like a pie. They're just like Pokemon. They're just running out of ideas. Make um, this Green yeah. Lantern a pie. Give him a bunch of blood vessels coming out of his neck <laughs> and make blood his head pie. a pie. I don't know. <laughs> or a custard. It could be a custard. Who cares? It comes from <laughs> sector 3.145, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yes, it does. Okay, so, so they basically go into the Sun Eater for a second. They get eaten, and Hal Jordan gets to burst them out of there, which is kind of a crazy scene. And the panels even start getting like eaten by the Sun Eater, and it's Whoa. a really cool artistic design. The Sun Eater is spiky. Layout. What is a sun eater spiky? It's kind of like a big purple cloud. It's, it looks a lot like um, Parallax in the Green Lantern movie. Oh. Just like kind of a wispy cloud it's, uh, thing that it's, comes to. It's to just, Galactus it's like and a, Fantastic Four It's like a Four jellyfish. <laughs> like if a jellyfish was like a giant, just a giant purple. If a jellyfish was a giant. Okay, I got it. Like imagine a giant jellyfish so the Imperium. cloud. Like if you were just you walk outside, right? You go uh, on your yeah. back porch. You're smoking a cigarette. Because I don't have your a back porch. Just, your wife Jessica doesn't want you smoking, I don't so you went to the, it. So you you went to somewhere that she couldn't see you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you look up at the sky, and you see a jellyfish coming across the sky, and it's coming to eat the sun. And what's more important than this podcast right now? I'm trying. You, your phone just went off. No, it's it's good. You? Oh, it's all okay. fine. All right. It's good. Okay. So so you look up in the sky and you see a giant <laughs> jellyfish coming for the sun. And it's like, that's crazy. That's the scenario. Okay. I got it. I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you were there. I could also just Google it, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Or you could read Green Lantern number four and uh, just see it for yourself. And that's uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. Book because, you know. Well, I'm, we're going to. We're going to speed run through the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 14 letters we have. <laughs> okay. Real quick before we do that, uh-huh. is this a good place? I forget if we've included this in the past, but I did a really <laughs> cool interview with my buddy Eric Reinhardt. Is <laughs> yeah, this a, we, is can, this we the can do it. We can throw it in. Let's put this in here. So it's a nice 20 minute uh, little conversation that Eric and I had where we uh, just talked about his influences. He's a really good artist and he doesn't read as much superhero comics as he does like Calvin and Hobbes and other yeah. stuff like that that's inspired him. So this is the the opportune time to include that yes. discussion. And here it is. Hey, Ted here. I am with my friend Eric Reinhard. He is a cartoonist. We worked together a couple times. We did uh, little political cartoons for a local newspaper called Asheville Current. Uh, we had a little 
cartoon segment there called the Ash Village Idiot. That was that was really fun. And uh, Eric's also we've we've developed a, a web series idea, a web comic that we we really need to jump back into. We had some pretty cool ideas and kind of let it sit on the wayside, and it's time to pick that back up, maybe. <laughs> but hey, here's Eric. He's with me here in the room. Howdy. Hey, so Eric, yeah, he's a cartoonist and super talented. Um, he always draws me something for my birthday, and that's always great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Eric, what got you into sequential art? I was very much uh, taken with things like Calvin and Hobbes and actually Charles M. Schultz's Peanuts. Growing up, I had a oh, those are the best. huge number of treasuries. Um that moldy smelly books that just piled up over the years <laughs> and that my brother threatened to burn because there were so many of them um <laughs> i had like six or seven calvin and Hobbes collections that was probably i think it's the mark i mean yeah. it started what in 87 and it like went until 96 and yeah. there is nobody that is alive today that does not have at least a flicker of of an awareness of what that just what yeah, that bill watterson yeah he's, he's amazing Unless, and such an interesting person too being as reclusive as he is yeah and i don't know if reclusive is the right word so much as uh you you talk about certain artists i think he uh i read somewhere that he turned to oil painting but whatever it is hmm. that he turned to he just knew that if he had gone the route that so many people do of merchandise of um Right. Say Jim Davis of Garfield or Charles M. Schultz uh, in an earlier time. I mean, in an earlier time, it would have been a little bit different, but, you know, kind of uh, lapsing into 80s, 90s, 2000s, you know, this is a time of Star Wars and all this. Right. You know, it, it's just, this is. A You're making your money off toys. Explosive and, yeah. consumerism, exponential people, extents of that, you know. People and, have bothered him for years to try to get him to, or try to make like a cartoon based off Kevin Hobbs and stuff. He's and, been so resistant. And I mean, d imagine the tenacity and imagine the singularity of just spirit that requires not even really as an yeah. artist but as a human but uh to get to in to a just... capitalistic society where, <laughs> you, where you need that kind of money where you can get like yeah i mean it would have he didn't need it though he sold so many books i think almost you can see in certain kind of strips that uh calvin is almost kind of like leaning seductively in that direction and hobbes is kind of pulling him back and there's one where they're leaping over these stones that go over like a stream and calvin asks hobbes uh do you believe in the devil, like a, a being that is just devoted to the destruction, the corruption, the self-abnegation of man? And Hobbes says, you know, I don't really think man needs the help. <laughs> and then Calvin says, uh, you just can't talk about animals. You just can't talk about these things with animals. And you can't talk with animals about these things. Right. It's just, you know, <laughs> I, I think you can't really, uh, you can't milk that too much. I think once you see it, on the Sunday page it's and he was also a huge um lamenter of like how comics were crammed onto a page with such efficiency that they lost their uh their splendor that like he talks about gasoline alley and crazy cat and all these strips that were mm. popular in the 30s and the pre-depression era where they would just kind of ex just unfurl across the page with so much such lush color and on Sunday you know yeah you get funny that papers yeah sundays still get to keep the color but then the rest of the week black and white and they're much smaller like i think on sundays he'd have like full page uh comics but every other one would be like what like two rows sort of mm -hmm. thing at the, at the most yeah and that's a really uh that's a tough thing to to reconcile with and i just you know i i don't know where people like me or you fit into that but i just know that um well, I think these days we have so much more room, like flexibility for, for how sequential storytelling can be told. Like it doesn't have, I mean, you know, we have the internet, so you're not confined to the newspapers, you, you know, to get a story out there. Um, you don't have to be the very best to be able to right. tell yeah. uh, the type of thing that you want to tell. So, it, you know, you're not really com confined to a certain amount of space, but... I personally like to not set limitations, but to kind of set guidelines for that sort of style of storytelling, just to, because if you're not careful, you can get so lost in the process of it, leaving yourself too open, you know, it like, it, it's just, it's good to know that like, okay, I'm going to draw my thing this way. 
Mm -hmm. um, whether it's giant splash pages or it's Mm -hmm. just a couple panels or whatever it is, you know, it's good to know that going into it so you don't get too lost. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot to be said for that. There's, there's simplicity, there's concision, there's conciseness, all that Mm -hmm. figures into the, uh, comic art as much as it is into any other art. I mean, if you have to, uh, you know, if, 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 if an idea takes you more than, you know, a certain amount of time to describe it, then it's probably an idea worth. Yeah. Shucking. You know, <laughs> you don't if, need it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of your thoughts and all of your ideas need to be compressed into like little mm-hmm. tiny packages and parcels, but it just means that you need to be able to kind of, like you said, um, yeah, bring it all together and make sure that it, it has, uh, an impact for you, an impact for somebody outside of you. And, I feel the same way with uh, filmmaking, too. Mm-hmm. People who come to me with ideas for a movie, I'm like, okay, that's great, but can you write it in a page? Like, mm-hmm. can you send me an email where it's, like, three paragraphs, and it's, like, beginning, middle, end, mm-hmm. and I know the whole story, and it's really concise? Yeah. If and you can't. In nonfiction yeah. writing, that's called, of course, or in, and I suppose in journalistic writing, that's called the hook. You yeah. The hook. And then once you have the hook, you know, you're guaranteed, okay, maybe a paragraph more. And then after that paragraph, you, you know, it's the same with a panel of, uh, you know, if, 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 if you cannot preserve that momentum for the next two panels that are co- that continuity, then. Yeah. Or, know, I mean, like Bill Watterson, though, he had some comics that would have story arcs that go on for like weeks, yeah. you know, like I'm thinking particularly one of my favorites is one where Calvin invents the cloning machine. Where oh. he, he has all these clones doing like uh-huh. all sorts of just chores and stuff for him, going to yeah. school for him and all that stuff. And they, he keeps that clone story going on for a while. <laughs> and it makes you, of course, question like how much of it. I mean, obviously you think that Hobbes comes to life miraculously whenever Calvin's around. But it's like at the same time, there are also plenty of times where yeah. he is simply a disused doll sitting right next to mm-hmm. calvin and you know his parents and or whoever it is in reality is is there yeah. it's just yeah i just love how he seamlessly he can somehow preserve all that you know all that believability is so effortlessly contained yeah, in every an, single one it's an amazing series definitely it deserves to be the classic that it is yeah so what else inspires you besides um, bill watterson well i really do like uh as we were talking about political cartoons that are able to, uh, you know, not become too preachy. I'm thinking of not really of, uh, um, you know, Doonesbury so much, but, uh, I like some old Dr. Seuss from world war two era. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. We have knew who doesn't. Yeah. That's really, I mean, he, that's before, of course he, he comes into his own and realizes this is kind of what is going to, mm-hmm leave my lasting stamp upon upon the ages but he obviously he could he could have done that for as long as he wanted to probably yeah. could have made it as a significant a contribution but um i think you know uh matt graining in the simpsons he was able to um delve into the political without like really uh sympathizing too much i mean he do- he identifies obviously as somebody who's on the left but he doesn't mm-hmm. he doesn't cram that down your throat necessarily the yeah. characters don't you know they're not trying to uh yeah i mean i love futurama that's yeah. probably what i know his work like the best and i, d- I just watched the disenchanted series that he did for netflix uh-huh. it's a netflix original it's kind of like a game of thrones like mm-hmm. medieval ages thing that's about a princess who doesn't want to be a princess she wants to be a like a knight instead uh, so okay. it, was, it was interesting they have eric andre in there as a little demon it's weird it's okay. a weird little show okay. um you let me borrow a matt Groening comic book though i've had it for mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Maybe like two years on my shelf now. That was before he actually did The Simpsons when he was still drawing those. It was the two rabbits. What the are, rabbits. What are they called? They're, well, Binky is the little one and Bongo is the big one. Okay. With the two ears. And then there's the woman rabbit changes her name constantly. It's like Deborah in one and I don't know what it is in the other. But, is Deborah um, biblical? Do you know? do, no, That's Deborah kind of is, is actually uh, Graining's girlfriend at one time. <laughs> Nice. And like, actually, it's funny because, um, yeah, he, he writes about in various like collections, like Love is Hell, along with Life in Hell, which is the name of the series. But right, the, the various right. collections are called either School is Hell, Work is Hell, Love is Hell, and How to Get to Hell and all these different kinds of plays on on, on hell know. and what hell is. Yeah. You and find hell in a lot of places. 
It's true. You do not need to venture very far. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's populated by rabbits and rodents and other kinds of recognizable creatures that are nonetheless behaving in, you know, despicably recognizable human ways. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's, that's, uh, but the crudity of it and just how simply some of them are drawn, it kind of reminds you of Shel Silverstein. It's like, this is an artist who's capable. He can, he can draw amazingly well, but he, he draws for this purpose in such a kind of purposely childish way Mm -hmm. and but it's just to get the point across and it does get the point across and it's so i think that's something that uh sequential artists will lean on simplicity you know like having clean line work it it just makes it easier to replicate the character designs over multiple Uh panels it it makes it easier to draw them at different angles it's just i'm not much of an artist but like that that's that makes sense it's easy to understand yeah and i think he really mastered just uh Whenever you, of course, see the the overbite and the bug eyes and the nose and the, you know, you see a Matt Groening character, and I think you see the same thing necessarily with yeah. uh, with uh, peanuts. You know, just there's this particular way in which that's drawn, and there's a particular way in which, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Jim Davis draws the Garfield characters and the Garfield animals, and it's all. Um, yeah. It's actually, it's so consistent that... Seth MacFarlane probably took a big page out of that book with his family guy. And like, you can tell... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth MacFarlane animation from Matt Groening animation. It's very distinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I almost sometimes thought that like it was mechanically reproduced, that it wasn't a free hand mm-hmm. that was actually drawing all this. Um, no, I know they've got a team of designers who that's their sole thing is to replicate mm-hmm. that style and make new characters yeah and before a certain point in the 1990s it was just you know it was just like wow this is <laughs> yeah this is amazing but yeah i mean i think those are probably that forms the constellation of my influences at least as a cartoonist i mean it's not necessarily as an artist overall but yeah i i don't know um yeah i've always liked that um you've got a cool style where in particular a lot of your characters have like really skinny necks and um yeah i don't know I, I like that like their neck is almost as thick as the rest of their head <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that you um the thing that we we're working on together the webcomic had a talking dog so that's always really fun to have those yeah. uh, anthropomorphic uh creatures that are displaying human qualities and they're so they're so common you, there's got to be something that you can do to make them like a little bit uh off yeah. kilter ours had a hat and a cigarette always oh and never showed its eyes it was yeah he had behind. sunglasses yeah yeah so he's he, cool he's stylish yeah <laughs> cool yeah. no i i, I do have, bring that back we do have to bring that back and Stay he needs to listeners he needs to have a lot of uh not necessarily profanity but lots of it's interesting things to say. he's fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> i yeah. think fuck it yeah yeah just fuck it you yeah. can say that on the show Ralph Bakshi and Fritz the Cat. And oh yeah, that. Fritz the Cat. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that yeah. that today that would probably the animation. Seem, yeah, probably would seem kind of like oh my gosh, it's that it's, sequence where he's just like tripping out and like the house is on fire and he's yeah. like smothered in flying tits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's got more than that to it, but it's. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, it, yeah, it's good stuff. That's true. Good stuff. Pretty good stuff. But I guess maybe like Justin Roiland of Rick and Morty might be the closest contemporary artist like that I can think of who's like just as, um, I mean, you know, just raunchy, mm-hmm. like doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He'll I, animate anything. Right. A lot of buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, there's got to be somebody who's willing to sort of mine that out because there's like, it sort of brings out a whole different territory of the imagination. You know, you think that what growing up watching disney characters that it's all supposed to be kind of a a universe of kind of disney it will sneak in some shady stuff in the background sure sure (laughs) snow white is uh yeah is a notorious example and the priest and the little mermaid had a boner during the marriage Uh, i did not know that i didn't eat this cloud spell sex in the sky there's penis coral rock structures and (laughs) it's all there yeah, and not that Den- that uh, Disney had anything to do with it, but you know there are parts of sure. uh, you know <laughs> Who Framed Roger Rabbit or Jessica Rabbit's yeah you know, yeah uh, Jessica uh, Rabbit's inspired an entire fetish people she's she's a you since know? 1988 yeah congrats yeah, yeah. but um, <laughs> well I hope that doesn't you know inspire a whole 
kind of culture of oh we're bringing mccarthy's mccarthyism back where comic books are evil yeah they make people perverts or that they're promoters of uh, a <laughs> certain kind of misogyny where we take women yeah. and we turn them into you know which of... has been true in the past oh like, yeah and that's oh, why sure. i kind of that's actually why i think i've been so hesitant to kind of get back into that because i feel as though and not necessarily with mm-hmm. in a pornographic salacious way but i would sort of i don't know kind of amp up a certain grotesque aspect of people in general yeah. to the point where it would just it really wouldn't it wouldn't be uh it wouldn't serve my artistic purpose to do that to to kind of completely just because i'm talking about politicians or supposedly corrupt or evil people doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily mean that i have to engulf all of humanity yeah, and everybody yeah. that who who might necessarily agree with mike pence or donald trump in this whole you know un, under this whole umbrella of just grotesqueness that's kind of what happens in um i don't know i feel i feel as though that is what happens in our our modern political satire and did um, you know mike pence's daughter put out a sequential kids book recently it was about their bunny marlo marlo the bunny he is the bunny uh, that lives in the white house um yeah yeah mike pence had a bunny that he took around everywhere and they made a kids book about it called marlo the bunny named after uh, marlon or marlon Marlon Brando. Oh, okay. Yeah, named after him. Okay. John Oliver did a spoof on it where he, uh, where the bunny in the White House goes to the garden and meets a, a boy rabbit, and the two rabbits start to fall in love, and then the two rabbits get married, but then there's like, you know, someone who looks a lot like Mike Pence telling them, rabbits can't get married, two boy um, rabbits have to marry girl rabbits, and so <laughs> it's pretty funny. The, that version of the book outsold the actual bunny book, oh, which I think is great. Yeah. Uh, okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's that's you know you yeah. can't anticipate what people's tastes it's will art. be especially in this day and age when you know there's just so much media that you know so many different ways of promoting oneself and one things as we're doing right now i mean it's uh you know we talk about a web comic that's that is to be and i'm sure it will be but um you never know you never know um yeah you're talking here on a podcast i think it's a pretty decent amount of listeners Okay. You know, at least we get maybe a thousand every episode. We have twenty eight thousand subscribers, though. I don't know why more of you aren't listening. This is a guilt trip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you have any final words? Any uh, last words before the end? Yeah, I would just say uh, it's very ominous. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. Just cleave towards simplicity. Cleave toward the thing that uh, that awakens something in you and just uh don't uh don't be too ambitious with trying to do too much all at one time just uh say what you have to say and i need to tattoo that on my forehead simple number of lines simple number of words that was in the elements of style at one point but that's all thank you that's all folks uh <laughs> and now we're back <laughs> all right now we're back all right. uh okay Dinosaur story. okay so uh first thing. thank you eric i we talked uh, like months ago we finally were able to find a good yeah time you to throw you, in that conversation. you sent that as like episode 31 this thing and we're on episode like 37 or something it was yeah, yeah so a good couple of weeks ago but, uh, but okay yeah, the, okay you know this is for a fast episode it worked um with this the, a couple of these are questions that we technically discussed last time but oh, my, we're in the question segment now my thing oh, yeah, yeah right. but my thing had yep. stopped recording if you recall <laughs> oh. and so we're gonna go back over those real quick and then the new ones uh this sure. is from Derek O'Kane. he says you should do an episode on how you think a flash or superman video game would go for the flash it just ever so every speedster is playable my plot would be someone is kidnapping speedsters team up with zoom the top flash family to find out who the battle your rogues and bosses upgrade your powers throughout the game for the superman game i would make it like spider-man with the main threat like brainiac and a whole bunch of side missions for other villains okay so <laughs> you had made a joke last time about how the flash game would just be collecting rings and then i said ah, yes I get because it. it's like sonic the yeah Hedgehog. but then and I also said it could be like Superman 64 where you have to run through a bunch of rings. And that's all I remember from the discussion. So what else? Or it could be this? like a really raggedy looking girl who's climbing through a TV. Oh, the ring. Seven days. You know, the ring too was filmed in Astoria, Oregon, where I live. I don't believe you. The Hunger Games was filmed in Asheville, North Carolina. Where I, I don't live. believe you. It's true. 
guess we'll just uh, why would keep, I lie? Keep talk going. So uh, the Flash. <laughs> uh, I think I made a comment before that the Flash game uh, would be hard to play unless it was like the game Fear or any other game that has like a slow everything down. No, 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 down. no, no. You're wrong. A Flash game is hard to play because if you're you can't on play Mac. it on your iPhone. Yeah, because you can't uh-huh. play it. Oh, we're bringing all the jokes back. <laughs> well, why are we rehashing this thing we recorded last time that I guess people didn't hear? Yeah, I'm sorry to this guy because it sounds like we don't care about this, but we talked about this already and it didn't record, and I'm mad. Did the uh, joke land? It's a Flash game. Yeah. You can't play Flash games on Apple yeah. products. So Flash uh, player. Yeah, Remember yeah. Flash Player, everyone? Yes. I don't I think do you too. can do that still, even play out of Flash. Flash Player is a thing out there. No, I mean, they had on a bunch an of DC animated universe Flash Player games out yep. there back in the day. On the Cartoon Network.com. Uh, but yeah, it'd be hard to play a Flash game if you were actually really fast because you were just running into stuff. So you'd have to like slow down. Like everything would have to go slow motion and then you just run at normal speed. And that would be kind of pointless. Like why would you even have a Flash game in that case? That'd be kind of cool. It'd be <laughs> like um, like some of the Zelda games where you like go back in time and fix a bunch of stuff. You go back to the present yeah. and it's like all changed. So it's like you could freeze time. Just like push everything around a little bit. Yeah, you I know? guess that'd and be kind of cool. Bring if you time like, back and see what oop, happens. I Maybe... fucked up. I'm going to go back in time five seconds or something. Yeah, that could be cool. Yeah. Or go back in time like save your 20 mom. years and yeah. save your mom and ruin the world. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, okay, this is from King of Mad Cows. Uh, they said Vandal... Oh, we talked about this before, too. I'm sorry. We're going to rush through this. They said that Vandal Savage's metahuman lieutenants in ancient times were his children. That implies all metahumans were descendants of Vandal Savage. So Savage... This is from Young Justice. So Savage had to wait until the metagene propagated across the human race before putting his plan into motion. Savage also knows that Darkseid will eventually turn on him, so he'll need to dust his league to fight Darkseid. So this is insinuating that all metahumans wow. are Vandal Savage's children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great grandchildren, right. blah 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 blah. Uh, Allegedly, which is except cool the alien thing. ones, because the yeah. Martians yeah. obviously came from a different place. Yeah, but are those classified as metahumans, or are they just aliens? That's uh, up <coughs> to you. I classify them as Martians, so that's where they're from. I well, don't think they'd like to be called pro- aliens. Yeah, what pronouns do they like? Yeah. To he, Miss, she, Miss John, Martian, Manhunter. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, cool. So thanks, thanks King of Man Cows. Ran- I just want to say <laughs> really Randall question. Savage. Yeah, Randall. Randall, Randall Savage, Savage is not a medic. Which I and I did not realize until recently that Randy Savage yeah. is actually like a wrestler <laughs> yeah, out so there. Ma- Bone I thought this was just Randy. like a funny like oh it's it's Randall <clears throat> Savage again the old inside joke the the old black sheep son of the yeah. Savage family. Well, that's all He's it, at it is again. to me too. I didn't base it on Macho Man Randy Savage. I just made up a name and it happened to be the same. <laughs> so. I think uh, it always makes me think of Monsters Inc. Yeah. Randall. Randall, yeah. Well, and I also monster. had a, there was a kid that I used to teach in marching band that was really dorky, and he would always pull his pants all the way down to pee at a urinal. What was his name? James Strecker? <laughs> yeah. I didn't <laughs> teach myself, you bozo. So anyway. But you do pull your pants all the way down to pee in the urinal. I do do that still, yes. I uh, do, do, do do that. So uh, this one do is do one that urinal. we read last time also, and then the person was like, hey, I didn't hear my thing. What What gives? So it, this is from Bob seventy eight fifty five zero seventy eight thousand five hundred and fifty. Uh, he says, "Hello, Maddie, James, and the rest of the crew." <laughs> he yeah. categorizes the rest of the crew. Uh, <laughs> first, I want to say how excited I am for a legion for a legion of superheroes movie. Do you think it could lead to Legion of Three Worlds? I really enjoyed that story, especially because the time trapper turned out to be Superboy Prime, and you all know what a big fan I am of fifty two. I would also like to ask if know. this could possibly... I didn't know Bob. Okay. Bob yeah, let's, do, let's tackle that first Bob question. Bob in the numbers? First. No. Bob Bob and the rest of the numbers? Yeah. <laughs> Bob numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Too many numbers. Well, like I said earlier, you have to rewrite these stories to get Superboy Prime out of this because Superboy Prime is just too complicated of a character. Yeah. Like he's... I mean... You well, we just talked him. about him. Like you couldn't include him in this... In, uh, yeah, in... in um. Emerald. I said under the Red Hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. that was the example. But like in yeah, I mean Superboy Prime, yeah, he's Superboy from our universe, allegedly. Right. I don't know. But <laughs> he's Superboy yeah. from the real world. The and real so world. It's, it just takes a lot of like like I guess to have him you have to establish the like crisis of infinite earths, and then you have to have infinite crisis and show where he was during this like yeah. whole thing, and then from there he has to go evil, so that when he's evil he can become the time trapper. <laughs> 
which in that case, he does the whole Legion of Three Worlds thing. But to have the Legion of Three Worlds, you have to have three Legions. And yeah. to have three <laughs> Legions, you have to have all these reboots. Okay. I, and you have to have zero hour. You have to have all the... All, yeah. Two, have to have two, two answers to this. <laughs> One, lot. they could maybe do the movie in the same fashion that they might do apparently a Dark Side War movie and that they won't set up anything. They'll just force it into it and just do it. Because like it's a famous comic story. Let's do the basics of it. But I don't think it will be a DCAU or DCAU <coughs> adjacent uh, movie like the Fatal Five one will probably be because the uh, I doubt any of the DCAU movies that have been coming out are like going to really like connect to each other or like continue a single storyline or whatever. But it remains to be seen, I suppose, because we don't know what's going on in the brains of the WBsers. You know, nope. does yep. that all make sense? <laughs> that makes sense. Now we could bring in the Legion from the Legion of Superheroes show. That's true. I guess uh, I could just do a, a movie <laughs> on that just to bring it back for no reason. Um, but he fun. says, I would also like to ask if this could possibly lead to a booster gold DCAU movie. I would love to see it, especially with Jessica Cruz, the female green lantern. Personally, I always considered Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes cartoon happening, but on another earth, so we already have two Earths. If you look at it that way, we just need a third. I just said that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Then he also replied. He says, reply to my own reply. Classy. To be clear, why I think they might involve Booster Gold eventually has to do with Superman X and the villain he was trying to stop. And in real life, how popular 52 was. I think through Superman X, they could bring in rips in time. How would you do Crisis on Three Earths? Just wanted to make sure you didn't forget about me and you understood the question. Uh, no, I didn't forget about you. I was just bad at we recording. We did not. I did understand the question. Booster Gold actually has like some ties with the Legion. He was yeah. even in the Legion of Superheroes, the, the cartoon show. He, he was steals in the a Legion ring, too. and he steals mm -hmm. this thing. That's how it. he has this flight stuff, yeah. yeah. Even though I think he's from, like, he's not from the 31st century. No, he's, he's from he's like, like 24th or something. Which seven. doesn't make sense why, unless the Legion's around earlier than the 30th. Or they got stuck back in time like Saturn well, you know Girl what? or something. They are. They're, they do have a Legion in the modern, even in the modern DCU, but it's like led by Vril Dox, Brainiac 2. Oh, okay. You know, he's like the original Legion yeah. leader. But then uh, sometimes he also calls himself Rebels and not Legion, but it's like acronyms. That's like the time. not Red Bull that you find at Dutch Bros, you know? I, what do you what have du do you have dutch brothers where you in your no. country you live in no what it's a coffee what? place <laughs> a it's a coffee place yeah dutch brothers <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so weird this is regional man you got hardy's over there <laughs> why would you drink coffee from a dutch brother because it's delicious go get a cold the only thing i went from a dutch brother is some marijuana <laughs> yeah amsterdam all right, so okay. moving on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, drugs okay. drugs we have, are bad, yeah. kids. We have one Don't do drugs. that is Marijuana's from... Marijuana's not a drug. Oh, man. Who is this I'll from? I'll stop talking. I'm sorry. I didn't write down who this is from. I'll have to figure this out, but I'm going to save it for... I think we should do a full episode on this. He has a who would win, and it's a list of like really powerful villains. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Oh, my Let's God. Do it. Okay. Who would All win? Right. Here's team one, okay? Okay. All right. Mongol... For the man who has everything for him, Darkseid with his forces from Apocalypse and his resurrected destroyer form, okay. possessed Grundy, so from Wake the Dead, Mordru, Mordred with the Amulet of First Magic, mm. Luthor and Brainiac hybrid final form, Luthoriac or yeah. Brainathor, Doomsday pre lobotomization, and the Justice Ooh. Lords. That's team Ooh. one. Okay. That's a pretty stacked team. Now, team two is. Every single member of the Justice League and Bat Family, every mm. Green Lantern, Amazo, Golden Version, all other villains in DCAU, <laughs> Cadmus, Galatea, and the Ultra Ultimen, New Genesis Forces, and High Father. Rules, no time travel, no pulling punches. Okay. Um, team two. Easy. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> there's way it's just a matter of numbers. At yeah, that point, they yeah, have it's just a every game. Green Lantern That's and every thousands. villain and yeah. every hero <laughs> yeah. and every like they have the new gods. Um, 
Yeah. I think just... maybe he means, or he or she, because I can't remember. I think maybe they mean uh, every Green Lantern we see in Justice League Unlimited. So maybe like a yeah, dozen. Yeah, but that's still a lot of Green Lanterns. But that's, that's still, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's only a dozen Green Lanterns. I yeah, think, yeah, I think even now, just... every member of the Justice League, is that just DCAU or is this like ever? I think because... this is specifically a DCAU question. Like, Okay. So. so you don't have people like ambush bug to right. like, fuck everything up. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> just stare at the camera and go, team two wins. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think even the fact that you have Amazo alone is like, the, yeah. I mean, I guess he couldn't beat possessed Grundy. I guess that's the point. I... So you, th- you don't think so? I think yeah, maybe. Um, I also <laughs> don't think he could maybe defeat like that super powerful dark side on his own. Yeah, you know, from maybe. The story. Like maybe. I mean, like the jailer you defeated him. It's hard to tell but, because he. But he, they yeah. didn't even really. They just gave him what he wanted. Yeah, he Amazo talks the talk, but can he walk the walk? He's amazing. Yeah, I I I don't know. I think I think Team Two still wins because of sheer Green Lanterns. Uh. And Mordred, they specify that Mordred has the amulet of first magic, which all that did was turn everyone into kids. Or, oh, sorry, it right. made everyone, so all now, made all the adults go away. So I guess right, technically right, right. he could just make everyone go away. Okay, <laughs> but, that's fair. But then we still have Cairo, Green Lantern. Actually, okay. That's still one Green Lantern. I think I want to switch this up a little bit Maybe. because he's specifying like specific eras of these characters. Right. But I think you have to do it. You bring, uh, well, you don't have to. This is all. Wait, he said no time well. travel too, right? Yeah. So how do you get all these? Yeah, exactly. The characters. So what, what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's pick a moment. So if you okay. say if, if you pick, uh, Doomsday pre pre lobotomization as the like linchpin, then that means that Amazo has to be off in space, so he's not. He can't be used. Uh, the Justice Lords are depowered. Uh, <laughs> Luthor and Brainiac hmm. haven't become a thing yet. Mordred's a, a not. And Mordred's a little kid that doesn't have the amulet for you know like so that doesn't work now so so I actually see this more of like like what this is is like a battle royale sort of thing where yeah, yeah. everyone you know yeah we have all these people from different iterations but what they do is they just wake up and all of a sudden <laughs> they're in this like battle zone and yeah. it's like okay it's like the Teen Titans time to fight. episode yeah. and then they and then after it's over they snap back up awake and it's like. <laughs> What did what did Neil Gaiman Sandman just do? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. You I know? have no memory. Yeah. No, the I think it's, uh, it's not the it's not Sand from JLU. It's not the Golden Age Sandman. This is Neil Gaiman Sandman. This says the Dark Side would have all of his forces from Apocalypse, so that might be enough to counter Green Lantern. I mean, like a bunch of Green what, Lanterns. like Calabac? Psh, yeah, Mantis. <laughs> He's Worf. No, I think I. <laughs> Granny, I don't know. you're gonna fit Granny against. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I was just thinking a bunch of parademons, but yeah, they're pretty much cannon fodder. So I guess I don't know. Easy. If you're saying all of the all of the villains, all it's the members of the two. Justice League, every Green Lantern, I think that, that alone is what what throws the linchpin in is the amulet of first magic. That was a yeah, good, good point because yeah. that <laughs> does mess everything up for Team Two. And I is it eighteen? Is eighteen the cap off for? That means we've got Batman Beyond. We've got we've got. Most that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like if if eighteen's the adult cap Terry. off. Tim okay. Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Drake can so still be there. Tim Drake's there. We've got Star Girl. <laughs> we've yeah. got Cairo, I suppose. The Ultimate are only, the Ultimate are only a few weeks old. <laughs> so. That's right. And we've got we can have as many Ultimate as we we need. <laughs> we can make all the Ultimate. <laughs> Forever. Okay. Just keep yeah, no, this, is, this was a good topic. All right, I'm moving on. <laughs> I think Team Two wins even with all the adults gone. We have as many ultimates as we need to throw at them. <laughs> oh, Maddie! I'm Maddie had said to this all the all other villains includes Mix Yesput Lick. They wanted to make sure that was clear. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but how old is Mister Mixaplick? Is he over eighteen? <laughs> He's pants years old. <laughs> He's relic. Exactly. <laughs> um, so okay. I think he'd leave. I think uh, he'd be able to first match it. Get <coughs> oh, this is back to Bob numbers. He says, I'm feeling lucky and thought I'd throw in a third question. If they ever do do involve Booster Gold, could they add Rip Hunter to the DCAU? Sure. Okay. Yes. Next. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I like I like Rip Hunter. He had like I've actually read some of the original like 1970s Rip Hunter comic books yeah. called Time Masters, and they were really cool. So I would love to see some Rip Hunter okay. stuff. Um, DC, if you're listening, I got a, I got a movie. I got another movie title. <laughs> Batmobile. It's called, it's called, get this, it's called Rip Hunter. 
Time Master. Whoa. All Just right, call it Rip. And then because that'll be how well it does Let in the box it office. Rip. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> Let it rip. Yeah, it's a, rip Hunter's <laughs> about to find out <laughs> that time travel's not all it's cracked up to be. And and but he needs a booster to really oh, get it whoa. going. All right. Yeah, we're but geniuses. booster is his son. <laughs> what ends up being just whoa. a guy helping him out ends up being a father son. Get moment. I don't <laughs> care for what you wish for, Master Wayne. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is from Busta Nutitious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was just wondering if you guys could put together the next DCAU team. Who would it be? For me, I'd say Batman, Supergirl, Doctor Fate, Red Tornado, and Wave Rider because OMG, Wave Rider. I guess they're okay. referring to how this Justice League in the new movie is not like your typical lineup. It's just a mm-hmm. like the Trinity and some other guys. So With Mr. Terrific thrown in there, yeah. Booster Gold, Rip Hunter, and Batman. <laughs> and Mr. Okay. Mr. Yes, but like... That's your, that's your team there? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, green... I'm going for Plastic Man, Elongated Man, uh-huh. Because we don't need, we do need. Two no, we guys. do, we do need two stretchy guys this time. <laughs> Pla- Plastic man, elongated man, two D man. Offspring, offspring is uh, yeah, two D man's great. Yeah. Offspring is Plastic Man's son from the comic okay. books. Okay, we could also do called Offspring. Uh, John Jones from the one episode got plasticity where, he's <laughs> where he can stretch. So, so we got the five stretchy guy team. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, Rubber Band Man. Yeah, from static. Perfect. <laughs> yep, yep, there you go. Um, <laughs> and they have to fight uh, Madame Rouge. From you could put Zeta the, uh, on that team because Zeta can like extend all his limbs and stuff. So. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. He's not a. <laughs> he's a springy guy. Zeta's on my other team. Zeta and, uh, is on my team. I'm gonna take Red Tornado from the other team. I'm so sorry, now we... I got Zeta. Oh, I got right. Red Tornado. I got Cyborg Superman. I got Cyborg. I got. Um, I'll take Commander okay. Steel. I got. <laughs> All the robots. I'll do. I got Red... Hardak. Hardak is on the team. <laughs> Hardak. I... He's the leader. <laughs> Hardak he pumps Batman. out all the new Hardak robots. Batman. Yeah, it's I'll... actually um, what's it, what's her name? Rhonda Dwayne. Yeah. Is that her name? Yeah. 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 Rhonda, Rhonda Swanson. Rhonda the Dwayne the Rock. Rhonda. <laughs> Dwayne the Rhonda Swanson. That's what her name is. Um, sorry we didn't take your question seriously, <laughs> but your name is Busta Nutitious, so that's what you get. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> this was a comment on our last episode where we spoke with Brian about uh, the last few episodes of Young Justice Outsiders, and he mentioned how some character was like a Gargoyles character, and neither of us knew what he was talking about. Queen Bee. Not... He was talking about Queen Bee. Yeah. And apparently it looked like a Demona? lady vampire. Demona, I think. She had a similar similar tiara, I think. Sure. But so... I Googled it. <laughs> Godzilla 00X says, damn, you guys left my fellow Gargoyles fan out to dry. Shake my head. I hope there's an apology on the next podcast. Well, I'm there's sorry. not. <laughs> I've never watched Gargoyles. That's my apology. I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry I've watched I, it like once. I remember the show. I just don't remember the show. I'm sorry no. that you think I should watch Gargoyles. Whoa. You probably should watch Gargoyles, James. Uh, yeah, I should. It, it looks okay. It's got like Clancy Brown in it or something. I don't remember. Uh, you know what else is Clancy Brown in it? Well, he's uh, Lex Luthor and Mr. Krabs, yeah, as you're well Krabs. aware. Um, the last four are from the uh, Discord, which you can find a link to in the description of this video. Slash I'll have podcast. to look for that. Uh, this is from Maxi Sona, which is who is a Patreon of us. If you were one of the workers on the Watchtower, what would your job be? My job would be to hold open the door for the meeting room. Yes, <laughs> Which, exactly. You can't take that one, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to have to write myself a better job. This was a I, joke because in Legacies number two, we do I that. I, I'm going to be in charge of the I, I'm founding the new Watchtower Exchange program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds Where good. I cross I go across the multiverse to figure out which watchtowers <laughs> to exchange. <laughs> this is from Byproduct. If you could spend a day with any of the DCAU Justice League, who? Any of them, including the ones from the Beyond Era, Bats and Harley, and Justice League vs. Fatal Five. Uh spend a day? Batman uh, would just ignore me all day, even though that would be my choice. Fire. I would go with fire. We would, we would spend <laughs> yeah, a day. We you know, the uh, of Brazil. You're, you probably it would be really hot. I heard she's Brazilian. Brazilian. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, That's because she's got that Brazilian <laughs> wax, you know what I mean? Could spend a day with Black Canary. It sounds pretty good. There was, there was one dream you, I you're had. Just that horny, that. You're, you're <laughs> just a horny. You picked the horny answer, James. I'll spend a day with party dress Lois Lane. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. She's not a member of the Justice League. She doesn't even know Superman's identity. <laughs> Uh, she went to her grave not knowing his identity. Probably, I'll 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 go with maybe not. I don't know. You horn dog! You can't just pick a hot, sexy lady. I know. That's, well, that's what you did. <laughs> what you t- turned this back on me? <laughs> I'm just following your orders, sir. Fine, uh, Bob. Fine. The, you Bob can have or... ice. Shh. It could be a double date. Shh. You can have ice. Shh. Torah Olaf's daughter? No, thank you. Uh, it's cool. Bob, Bob the, <laughs> Bob <laughs> the random nice guy. Job. Bob the random guy says, are, Bob Tim, numbers. are Tim Drake's children genetically the children of the Joker? And I forgot that Ooh. I was in the Untitled Does Mail segment children? Discord channel, and I wrote, could be. I guess it depends if we define them as always being the Joker. Define him as always being the Joker. I'd say they only be Joker's kids if Tim transformed mid-coitus, which would be rather horrifying. <laughs> Just laughing and clutching his face face and maybe stephanie brown is like oh, oh what is happening <laughs> so um <laughs> that that would be uh they're just just clanning around in the bedroom yeah man Do, does tim drake have kids he we've yeah. never seen kids he, he does have well kids. Bar- yeah barbara says like he's a, he's a good guy wife couple kids or something like that when they're talking so hmm. we've never seen these kids no we don't maybe they're the deities or maybe, yeah, maybe the Joker, yeah, maybe they are, I don't you know. You know, in my head canon, Tim Drake's kids are just robins. They're birds. Because, Actual birds. Yeah, they're birds. I'm sorry. That's weird. This That's one's from weird. Edward. Edward says, what is your least favorite DCAU show you can't say Zeta Project? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, actually. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um... Seda Project is not bad, but great. if I had to, if all of them together, it would be that. But I can't choose. I'd ha- I, I, I hate to default to Static. But yeah, that's I know. Just, like it's either Static or Superman. I was gonna say series. Superman. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just. Boring I, I do sometimes. know why. It's because it didn't really have a satisfying ending. It was left very open ended, and like, yeah, all the like stuff from oh, Legacy was carried over into JLU. It set up a lot of stuff for later. And like neither of the Batman, the Batman cartoons didn't have like a finale. Batman Beyond didn't have a finale. I, I was tempted to say the new Batman Adventures also, even though I love yeah. aspects of the new Batman Adventures. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's either Superman or Static. Uh, yeah, I guess that, that little chunk of time, the Superman, New Batman Adventures era of these shows is probably the least memorable Actually, I'm gonna say the 2003 Teen Titans series. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the DCU. I guess we'll right? do a Willie Cannon episode. For you <laughs> yeah, wrong. man. Uh, that's my uh, that's my choice. Oh, that's the last question. All right, we did it. Then the last question was for Name on Toya. You've Make that made this joke several We're times, keep and I'm not joke. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I continue that's to fine. be left with you can so just many stay James questions. If you want to. Um. What's the end of the episode, Docs? James, go fi- find... Where is it? I don't remember what to talk about. Okay, there we go. Uh, 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 that's the episode. Thank you for listening. Uh, this, episode is po- this episode is out every other Monday. <laughs> Just the same episode on repeat <laughs> today yep. and then two weeks from now. You can listen to the same thing Forever. again. Forever. Uh, it's on iTunes. It's on YouTube. It's on WatchtowerDatabase.com. Those are the three places you can find it. Share this with your friends if you enjoyed it, so that they, more people can listen to it, and, and so you, that you, we we get more subscribers and we have more time to not rush through future episodes. That's true. Mm-hmm. Once I finish my movie, and again, and once Doomsday Clock, same time Doomsday Clock ends, <laughs> then, yeah. I'll, then I'll <laughs> Which finally. Which is the it's the ever vague tomorrow. Uh huh. Uh, as Adam likes to say, sometime between now and never. So <laughs> that's a bad way to put it, though, because it will. I bet happen. he took that from a Star Trek episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're on social media at DCAU Watchtower, or you can email us info at watchtowerdatabase.com. Those are a couple of ways that you can send us some stuff to talk about. Uh, or if you just want to say, like, hey, I like you, I like your face, and we'll be like, thanks. Uh, We've got our own private social medias too. We usually tag them on our on our posts. Yeah. If you look at our Instagrams. Yeah. Say what? What's your thing? Z. 
I'm at ted.kendrick. I'm also at artificial.ink.creative. That you is like my... those dots. You know what? It's good. F- it's not a space, but it's close. <laughs> I'm at <laughs> I'm at Jamie Streck 518 on Instagram. I'm also JT Strecker on Twitter. And I'm at your mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, videos are out on this channel. It's different now. I can say the different thing finally. The videos Wait, are out on this channel every Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday. I got to get used to that. <laughs> the new schedule is different. Cuz there's no Tuesday video anymore. Nope. There's no Trivia Tuesday? No. Nope. Not anymore. They might come back maybe for a special episode here or there. <laughs> but it's you, yeah, you it's know. a consistent su- Sunday, Wednesday, m- Monday, Thursday. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday. Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday. We might, you know, it's the death of Trivia Tuesday, but we might have a reign of Trivia Tuesday. So it's Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and (laughs) somewhere in there. (laughs) We're gonna, we're we're gonna have to do a new little channel intro video. Yeah, I already took down, or not, didn't take it down, but I already like hid sort of the original one. I don't have it on the main page anymore. You can still watch it though, because I'm proud of how the edit went. Um, Anyway, subscribe. Because why not? You can he- not? You see all the things I just said. Uh, our we next a lot of things Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, or whatever you yeah. just said. It's out there. <laughs> we got it. We had a Patreon vote for videos going on right now that I think ends. Uh, maybe mm, it actually might end yesterday if you're listening to this. I can't remember. <laughs> maybe it ends. We're very the next organized Sunday. this episode. It's very organized. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I don't know things. I'm, I'm. There's no time travel. That's one of the caveats. <laughs> you are a twelfth level intellect. You know things. I can see. We, that's our thing. We drink and we know things. I'm like the Just third like eye. the guy from Game of Thrones. I'm like the three eyed raven. I know everything that uh, happened. That's, that's in, definitely in the past. who I was quoting. That is yeah. who I just quoted. Yep. Yep. And we can see everything yep. in the past and the present, but not the future. Yeah. All right. So. Oh. Uh, Discord's in the, the, the description. Patreon's in the description. Give us your money. Give us all your money so we can use it for better purposes than you were going to. Um, there's you don't also to give us all your money. You can keep like a penny. Yeah, that's true. You got to live off something. There's also we'll do merch. A, there's a t-shirts. Progressive tax rate. There's t-shirts. We'll only tax you at oh. the seventy percent. All right. Anyway. All right. So there's <laughs> t-shirts. There's phone cases. There's hoodies. They're all. At... I got shirts. I got my shirts. Yeah, they're in the merch uh, store. Twelfth level intellect like shirts. Really cool. Can I say the thing now? Can I say what? I'm sorry. I just want to keep interjecting on everything (laughs) you say for the rest of the episode. So it's uh, HTTP (laughs) colon uh, slash slash teespring.com slash stores slash DCAU Watchtower. Um, Why is a colon like a writing disk? Why is a colon two dots and a semicolon? Oh, now you want me to talk. Okay. Is a dot and a line. Shouldn't it be semi is the one with two dots because it's less than the. No, no, no. It's sumo. Sumo. Oh, sumo wrestlers. Sumo wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, oh, I, I, I forgot to mention this last time, but I'm going to mention it now. I got to go to watchtowerdatabase.com to find it in the first place. This is the last thing I got to say before the amazing little outro that I've started adding to these things. Oh, oh please I... go to watchtowerdatabase.com. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry. Okay. Uh, we're, we're Loot Crate affiliates now. Did you know that, Ted? Ooh, I we... did because I go to watchtowerdatabase.com. Yeah, you sure do. I'm it's gonna solitary. start saying this, and we've videos. got a twenty percent off coupon code. <coughs> what, what is the code? It's a ten percent off. So it should be twenty. Thank, thank it should be twelve. For... It should be twelve percent. Yeah, yeah. We should try to do that. That'd be kind of that'd be good. You know why? Um, but because you know, you you can go to lootcrate.com if you click the link in the description of this video or on the i the iTunes or whatever, and you go to Loot Crate through that link and you buy a Loot Crate. Then we get some of that money, and you can use uh, Loot Ten L O O T One Zero as a and coupon it, code to save ten percent off. But it should be Loot Twelve. It should be ten. I know, I want okay, but it's not. It's ten. So, <laughs> God, are we gonna have to be the tenth level intellects? That's such a downgrade. Do you want? Do you want the the money? Do you want me yes. to send you money next time or send what? You, you're not. Let you're. You want. Don't make you. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I quit. That's the episode. I, this is the last episode of this podcast. <laughs> it's all over. We're coming all back over. strong as the thirteenth level. It's Lex next time. What's the? Oh, you, we didn't have an open. Wait. We didn't have a gag this time, so you can't close. With the we're, gag. we're gagging here at the end. It's so bad. It's, it's, the, see you next die. time on Batmobile. I don't know. Is that it? He's, he's the Batmobile.
Bye. Um, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was trying to think of something to say about the Batmobile. Yeah, that's it. That's over. It's gonna drive you crazy. That no, I I stopped it a while ago. <laughs> it's it's got the wheels on the bus go round and round. <laughs> I'm not. I'm reaching for the stop button. I'm hitting stop. The three, two, one, stop. <laughs> no offense, but I really don't think you could follow the reasoning of a twelfth level intellect such as my own. Guess not. The Twelfth Level Intellects podcast is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Visit WatchtowerDatabase.com for more podcast episodes, videos, comics, artwork, and pretty much anything DC Animated Universe you can think of.